Hello and welcome to the first part of my tutorial series Why can I never have enough VCAs? So today I'm gonna go through the basic controls of a VCA in order to help you understand the potential of these units and my hope is that this will help me with uh, later tutorials to be able to be more to the point and go over these topics more quickly. So I'm going to show you in this series a few different VCA units, some of them very crazy, some of them very rudimental. Today I'm going to show you the UVCA. Now this has some basic functions. It's one of the most popular VCAs in Eurorack and it's it's a good starting point for us just to go over the most basic functions. So I'm gonna patch a triangle wave to the input and I'm gonna patch the output into my mixer. So you'll see on the scope the uh, sine wave and at the moment it's uh, not getting through the uh, VCA so if we raise the bias you will now be able to hear it and uh, at the same time you'll be able to see it on the screen so think of the bias knob <coughs> think of the bias knob as the base point for your VCA and the incoming CV will modulate away from this base point. We can turn it all the way down to zero, we can turn it up to unity gain or anywhere in between. Now you will notice on the on the oscilloscope that the UVCA appears to deliver us a waveform that's just under unity gain but this is just because I am monitoring it with the scope and this is stealing a little bit of our signal so bias imagine in the early days of synthesizers now analog oscillators are basically a constantly ringing device. They don't shut up. And this isn't very musical. Most sounds start off with silence, come in and go out. So the VCA was introduced. The bias was fixed at zero and the user could by introducing an envelope, rhythmically open and close the VCA. This is why you will find in the market today loads of VCAs that simply have no bias setting. The bias is set to zero by default and the user can simply attenuate the incoming CV. So that's what the bias knob is. It just sets the base point. With no CV, bias fully down, no sound passes. Bias fully up, all the sound passes. Easy. So, now we have this linear versus exponential. What does this mean? This has to do with the response of the VCA to control voltages. Some things are, are better with linear, other things are better with exponential. You will find in the marketplace also VCA units which are strictly linear or strictly exponential. I will
will show you some of these later. Now, in the UVCA, this knob takes the linear response and exaggerates it as we bring this knob up. You will notice on the scope that it's not only now bringing the volume way above unity gain, it's also clipping. So if we bring the CV attenuator down, we are now about unity gain. And that's what the CV attenuator is for. Fine tuning how much you allow the CV to affect your unit. So let's crank that up again. And let's crank this way into ex exponential. Now, you may think immediately, doesn't that sound fat? I mean, this is much fatter than, than this, right? Not entirely. So two things are at work here. First off, the waveform now has a more square characteristic, and this has more harmonics. And truly, this is a change. But another thing that's happened, the waveform has also gone dramatically up in volume. Now this is something I want to stress, and I'm going to show you here. By patching into another VCA, and bringing the volume back down to unity. So our brains are wired in such a way, and our ears, that loudness is nice. If we hear a sound, and it then gets louder, somehow we feel it's better. Now this isn't true, and when it comes to mixing sounds together, simply making all the sounds louder won't make a nicer mix. So when altering sounds, you really want to listen to them at the same level. So if you're making experiments with overdriving your VCAs, and you want to hear the sound of the distortion, saturation, clipping, or whatever effect they are having on the sound, do yourself a favor and bring the level back down to the original level and compare from there. Some VST effects do this. You simply turn them on and oh, they sound so good. Really, they've just increased the volume a little bit. Keep that in mind. So, exponential and linear. An exponential signal sounds more organic, more acoustic, more like a low pass gate. It has that kind of plucky feel to it. So, when would you use a linear signal? Linear is more normal to CV modulation. If you were using a signal to pan left and right in stereo, uh, an exaggerated exponential setting would be weird. Now, there is no golden rule here. Whatever sounds nice to you is the correct thing. But um, in the marketplace, People try to sell you linear to use with control voltages and exponential to use with sound. This is why you will see on many devices, both VCAs and envelope generators, a setting of exponential and linear. Now a lot of modules let you find the sweet spots in between. And this is what I like. So, 
What can we now do that we know about the bias knob? We can raise the bias to full and instead of just bringing the volume up from 0 to 10, we can, by introducing a negative control voltage, invert this envelope if we, in order for it to be negative we can now introduce this to our second VCA channel so the bias is up at 100% first VCA channel is taking sound from silence up to unity gain Second VC VCA channel takes this sound from unity gain down. Now, if we introduce this beat, we will hear why we would do this. bass kicks, you'll hear the other sound duck away. This would be very useful if our bass and bass drum were working at the same frequency. We can now duck the bass out of the mix to make room for the kick. Fantastic! So, we can use the VCA to raise the volume, to lower the volume. Another very simple thing to do with the VCA is to vibrate the volume. Now, it is better to vibrate the volume before we raise and lower it, so we'll change these settings around. We will now use our first envelope in here and we'll have the second channel raise and lower the volume. So, in order to vibrate the channel, we need an LFO. Let's turn off the drums. If I plug this LFO in. If I plug this LFO into the console voltage of the first VCA, so let's let's bring the second one under control for a little while. We'll bring the uh, setting to fully linear. We'll bring the bias down. And we'll, we'll kind of ease off the, the CV. So say we completely turn the CV off. You can see the signal is, is constant at the low volume. Bringing the pitch up. You can hear this a little better. Introducing the LFO. now fluctuates the volume of the sound. Reintroduce percussive envelope to a second VCA and we now start to get a flute-ish kind of sound. Of course for a flute we might want to add some noise, 
and some other elements, but I hope you get the general idea. So here is a fun thing I want to show you. If we bring the bias down completely, and we just listen to the LFO, you notice how the sound completely disappears. I hope you understand why this is. The LFO in its positive phase opens the, the VCA. The negative phase would want to bring the volume below zero. You'll see as we raise the bias bias goes closer to zero, more and more of our sound just com completely disappears. Now a really fun thing is inverting VCAs. When this sound turns off, the inverting VCA will simply invert the waveform and let you hear a negative version of it. This can also be called a ring modulator of sorts. We'll look at these later. I hope you understand a little bit more about the basic controls of a VCA, that the video is informative, and that you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.